Jupiter is a mysterious gas giant that doesn't easily reveal its secrets. Being two and a half times more massive than all the planets in the solar system combined, it could easily fit inside almost 1,300 Earth-sized planets. An airliner flying at a cruising speed of 900 kilometers per hour would take less than two days to circumnavigate the Earth. However, the same liner would need 21 days to fly around Jupiter. Even though this planet has no solid surface, you can't call it soft. A pressure of millions of atmospheres and a temperature above that on the sun's surface. Such dismal conditions would await anyone daring to get inside this gas planet. But we'll try to get there anyway. In this video, you'll find out why Jupiter is so huge, what red spot it has on its surface, what was found inside Jupiter, and if there's a planet inside this gas giant. Jupiter Jupiter is the third brightest object in the night sky after the Moon and Venus. You can easily see it with the naked eye, so it's impossible to say for sure who discovered Jupiter. After all, we don't think about the discoverer of the Moon, right? But still, some historical figures can be considered discoverers. The legendary Galileo Galilei discovered the satellites of Jupiter at the turn of 1609 and 1610. Coincidentally, they were the first discovered satellites of other planets in the history of astronomy. Two generations later, in 1664, when Galileo was no longer alive, another great explorer, Giovanni Cassini, first discovered the well-known Great Red Spot on Jupiter's surface. In all fairness, the British scientist Robert Hooke might have discovered it first a year earlier. The first sightings mentioned in the literature suggest that the spot has existed for at least 350 years. For over three centuries, the spot has intrigued astronomers. This oval formation of variable size, located in the southern tropical zone, is Jupiter's most famous feature. The nature of the great red spot has long been known. This is a long-lived free vortex in Jupiter's atmosphere. This is an anti-cyclone where the substance rotates counterclockwise and makes a complete revolution in six Earth days. Currently, the spot has dimensions of 15 by 30,000 kilometers. This is enough to fit two Earth-sized planets, and there would still be some room left. And a hundred years ago, observers noticed that it was twice as large. Such gigantic scales are only natural given the huge size of Jupiter itself. But why is Jupiter so big? Because it can be. This is probably the most straightforward answer, which is also the most precise. Jupiter's size comes from its nature as a gas giant. Big size is the most distinctive feature of such planets. For example, Jupiter's neighbor Saturn has a slightly smaller diameter of 116,460 kilometers without the rings. And if you consider all the newly discovered exoplanets, Jupiter may seem rather humble compared to some of them. For example, the gas giant WASP-17b is about twice the size of Jupiter, although it weighs only half as much. Sometimes, Jupiter's hydrogen composition and size fuel sensational speculations that the planet is, in fact, a failed star. At first glance, everything seems to fall into place. Hydrogen, massive size, and huge temperatures. It would seem that could be enough for a thermonuclear reaction to start for a newly made star to appear in the solar system. But the fact is that in order to become at least a red dwarf, Jupiter needs to be 80 times bigger. Jupiter is too small even to become a brown dwarf, which doesn't even qualify as a star. Since Galileo's time, our technical capacity to observe Jupiter has grown rapidly. And at the end of the 20th century, humanity even managed to send a spacecraft to the gas giant. 
As of 2022, there were as many as nine such missions in total. Seven spacecraft were passing by near Jupiter. Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, Voyager 1, Voyager 2, Ulysses, Cassini, and New Horizons. They didn't just fly past the Jupiter system, but collected a lot of crucial data and took impressive pictures. But of course, most of the information we received came from the orbital missions of Galileo and Juno. Juno's mission is still going on, but Galileo's mission was more interesting. This is because it was the first time in history that a probe was sent to Jupiter. It literally dived into the dense atmosphere of the giant and managed to send some invaluable information about its extreme environment before collapsing. And now you can turn on your imagination and see yourself as the pilot of that probe. The only difference is that you are completely safe. Buckle up, we're going inside Jupiter. The descending spacecraft was literally cramped with equipment. Of the 11 research tools on board of Galileo, seven were installed on the probe. Consider the following to understand the scale of space and the distances in our solar system. The Galileo mission launched from Earth in 1989, and the spacecraft entered Jupiter's orbit as early as 1995. Things got exciting at the end of 1995, when at 4 p.m. UTC, December 7th, the probe almost reached Jupiter's atmosphere and began to turn on the onboard equipment. It passed through the planet's unremarkable and faint rings and immediately registered something unexpected a previously unknown radiation belt, 10 times more powerful than the Van Allen belt on Earth. The probe entered the upper hydrogen clouds of the planet at 10.04 p.m. UTC, December 7, 1995. It flew at a speed of 76,700 kilometers per hour without any braking. It was the most difficult atmospheric entry ever attempted friction and breathtaking speed formed plasma with a temperature of about 15,500 degrees Celsius. This is almost three times hotter than the sun's surface. During the descent, the probe's 152 kilogram carbon phenolic heat shield quickly lost over half its mass. The probe slowed to subsonic speeds within two minutes of entry. Then, it opened a 2.5 meter parachute and dropped the heat shield. The speed decreased to 430 kilometers per hour. The most interesting part of the mission began. Scientists predicted that the probe would pass through three layers of clouds with different pressures and chemical compositions, from particles of ammonia ice to ammonium hydrosulfide. However, the data from the probe's onboard tools made the researchers revise these predictions. It turned out that Jupiter's atmosphere in its upper part is much hotter than scientists thought, contains much less helium, and doesn't have a three-layer structure. Clouds of ammonia and ammonium sulfide were much thinner than expected, and no water vapor clouds were detected at all. The probe registered a very strong wind, it was expected to detect a speed of up to 350 kilometers per hour, but in reality, the wind reached 530 kilometers per hour. No solid surface was found during the 156 kilometer descent. After 61 minutes, the probe stopped transmitting data. A temperature of about 1700 degrees Celsius and a crazy pressure of 500 earthly atmospheres destroyed the apparatus. Our further virtual journey into Jupiter will be only based on scientific speculations and theories. Although Jupiter is a gas giant, it is by no means all gas. All these dense hydrogen clouds are just a thin film considering the rest of the planet's structure. And if you had a bathyscaphe that was more robust than the probe of the Galileo apparatus, 
you would pretty quickly reach a whole ocean of liquid hydrogen. What's more, you would hardly notice a clear boundary between the clouds and the ocean. Changes would occur gradually on your way down. Gaseous hydrogen would turn into an increasingly dense fog, then into gas and liquid, and then into a liquid. And then you would find yourself in the ocean of gas-liquid hydrogen. A 7,000-kilometer layer of gas-liquid hydrogen starts at the bottom of the ever-denser atmosphere at a level of 1,500 kilometers. Then the whole hell breaks loose. The pressure is 0.69 million bar, and the temperature is 6,200 degrees Celsius, which is more than on the sun's surface. Despite the extreme temperature, the pressure of over half a million earthly atmospheres does its job, turning hydrogen into a molecular liquid. Another 8,000 kilometers down, and something special happens to the substance. Being exposed to mind-blowing pressure and temperature, electrons break away from atomic nuclei, and hydrogen takes on a special, very strange form. Atomic nuclei seem to float in a medium of free electrons. It is this hellish concoction that is called metallic hydrogen. In such an exotic aggregate state, hydrogen resembles metals and even has superconductivity and fluidity. This gives rise to Jupiter's powerful magnetic field which is also very heterogeneous throughout the planet. The texture of metallic hydrogen itself resembles liquid mercury, and apparently it makes up most of Jupiter. The layer of liquid metallic hydrogen is from 42 to 46,000 kilometers. And what comes next? Is it safe to assume that there is a core? So far, we can only speculate that Jupiter has a core. Some data and calculations are rather contradictory. For a long time, it was believed that if there is a core, then it's most likely metal silicate, has a 25,000 kilometer diameter, contains water, ammonia, and methane, and is surrounded by helium. The temperature in the center is 23,000 degrees, and the pressure is 50 million bar. Saturn has a similar structure, but the new data received from the Juno mission made us reconsider this hypothesis. Jupiter's core is probably less dense and larger than previously thought. Astronomers from Rice University and Sun Yat-sen University have come up with a rather daring scenario that could explain both the unexpected core parameters and some of the more confusing data on Jupiter's gravitational field. According to scientists, unexpected data can be explained by a space disaster that happened in the early solar system. A powerful collision between a young Jupiter and a rocky protoplanet 10 times as massive as Earth may have occurred about 4.5 billion years ago. As a result, the contents of Jupiter's core mixed with the planet's less dense inner layers. At first, even the researchers themselves couldn't believe their own speculations. But the theory explained a lot and was well-grounded, so it received the green light in the scientific community. Our journey is over, but who knows what surprises the ongoing Juno mission will throw at us. We may well look at Jupiter completely differently.